All right, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to look at a couple of options for compressing static text assets like CSS, HTML, and JS files. This is vitally important, especially over mobile and low bandwidth connections. If you didn't think we could squeeze any more kilobytes out of these files, just you wait until we're done here. We're going to start where we left off in the last episode, but if you need to catch up, Git Checkout Asset Compression. All right, let's talk about gzip first. gzip is the standard and has been for many years. It's understood by all browsers, and computation costs aside, if you're not at least gzipping your production bundles, you're leaving a lot of kilobytes on the table. In Webpack, it's easy to get it done, so let's jump in. In your terminal, let's npm install compression webpack plugin. Now in webpack prod, let's add a compression plugin. Now down in the plugins section, we'll add our new compression plugin. Algorithm gzip. All right. So now when we run npm run build, we can see that we have a number of new files. Our original main CSS is complemented by a main CSS.gz. All of our files that are run through Webpack are considerably smaller using the .gz. So these are gzipped files. Our compression plugin worked. And now with our new gzipped files, let's start Heroku Local. Open this in the web browser. Now in our network tab, Their content type should be gzip. So even though we've created the files, we're not able to load them yet. So what's wrong? It seems that we need a better server configuration. Heroku still doesn't support HTTP2 or gzip at the server level. So for now, we'll do so at the express level. And luckily, there's a package for that. So back in our terminal, let's npm install Express static gzip. So now in Express, instead of the usual static middleware, let's replace that express static gzip. Require express static gzip. Now let's tell our server to use the express static gzip. It's going to take one argument, same as before, out of the disk directory. All right, so that change was made, no problem. Now let's run Heroku local again. We're looking for the content type to change from text to gzip. There we go. The JavaScript and CSS have changed to gzip, as has the HTML file. The image file has been left image JPEG. gzip is not going to compress JPEG images, because JPEG is already a compression format. In a future episode, we'll learn how to compress JPEGs even more than they already are. But what's the advantage? If we use large request rows in our network tab, we can see the original size of the file and then what gzip has compressed it to. So in the case of main CSS, gzip has given us an additional 130 bytes. We can see that the content length is in bytes. Right here we have 463 bytes for the index.html, 463. Of course, the response is shown to us in an uncompressed format automatically. So even though it says main CSS here, we're pulling in a gzipped file that's the same size as our output, and it's being uncompressed automatically for us. Pretty cool. But we can do even better than that. Next, let's look at Brotly, which is the new compression algorithm on the block. And as of this point, it's widely supported in browsers. So to add it to our project, let's npm install Brotly Webpack plugin. So back in our Webpack prod, let's pull that plugin in.
So now in our plugins, let's add it to the bottom. It takes no options. Now in Express, where we have server use Express static gzip, we're going to add an option. Enable broadly. All right, so now in our terminal, let's run npm run build. And now we have a new set of files. So we have the originals, the gzipped versions, and finally the broadly versions, which are even smaller. Cool. So what happens when you've got your Express server and it's looking for compressed files, but your dev server's serving unoptimized files? Does it 404? Let's find out. In the terminal, run npm run dev. Let's open it in the browser. And we can see that even though we updated our Express middleware to serve static gzip files, it still falls back to normal files if it can't find the gzip versions. As you can see it's serving normal content type instead of the gzip content type or the broccoli. If we do Heroku local, We can see that the encoding is now BR for broadly, and that the content length is the right length. All right, so we've considerably crushed down our files, and we're ready to add more features to our project. In this episode, we went over a few compression options for Webpack production bundles. Both were pretty close to the way we add any plugin, paired with a simple express middleware for serving .br or .gz files when they're right next to the uncompressed files in dist. We then looked into any implications compression has in the development environment, which were absolutely none. If you need to catch up, get check out Asset Compression Final. All right, so our bundle is tiny, but for good reason. It has very little in it. Next, we're gonna fill out our hero's blog with real markdown articles and get into the wild and woolly world of server-side rendering. I'll see you there.